All right, I think we're ready to get started here. Welcome and good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us for this very important press conference regarding public school funding here in Chesterfield County. I am your Chesterfield County Government Public Information Officer, Jay Elias O'Neill. Before we open up for uh, our presentation, I want to make a couple of very uh, important um, introductions here. Uh, front and center is Mr. Jim Holland. He is our Board of Supervisor Chair. He also represents the Dale District here in Chesterfield County. This is Chris Winslow. He is our Board of Supervisor Vice Chair. He represents the Clover Hill District here in Chesterfield County. Sitting left to Mr. Holland is Ms. Excuse me, Dr. Joe Casey. He is our County Administrator. And sitting to the left of him is Matt Harris. He is our Deputy County Administrator of Administration and Finance. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and send over the presentation to Mr. Holland. Mr. Holland. Thank you, Jay. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for being here today. Although it's rainy outside, I can tell you it's very sunny in my heart right here in Chesterfield County and in the Dale District, I might add as well, Jay. Uh, first of all, I want to say that we are all committed to seeing our schools succeed. And the Board of Supervisors is continuing to offer our assistance to our school board colleagues as they work toward adopting a budget. The Board of Supervisors' combined years of experience means we are able to offer insights and perspectives we believe can help our school colleagues. This is my 14th year reviewing and approving budgets here in Chesterfield County and, of course, others as well. I'm pleased and excited. I'm really excited. After having served on this board for over 14 years, that we are presenting in the physical 22 budget a pay plan for teachers, educators, the many teachers here in Chesterfield County. We reviewed it. We have studied the pay plan that was done last fall, and we are excited that we can fund it here in Chesterfield County. In addition, what makes this day historic in the county's history is that we're able also to fund our public safety personnel uh, plan as you well know, the, the critical parts of a county are its educational system and its public safety. When you have those two major pillars in your community, you have a winning, successful, first choice community. So I'm excited about that. Despite the pandemic and its many challenges, we've worked to, together with our school board members to achieve uh, many notable funding milestones, including this year's fiscal year 21, local transfer of over $10 million. Also, the largest investment in major school maintenance of $58 million. The return of over $8 million to fund school employee bonuses. An injection of more than $28 million in federal CARES monies, among other funding achievements. We value schools as a major reason why families chose to live here. I moved here 30 years ago and educated my children right here in Chesterfield County. And they're doing very well, by the way, too. We recognize that a great school system is essential to the quality of life, and we are demonstrating our commitment to education and our teachers by ensuring that the plan is a priority for this Board of Supervisors. And we hope that our school board members have indicated as well that it is a priority for them. In addition, I should add, our business community is committed to our schools and our county, and certainly a dedicated, wonderful workforce. So I want to take this opportunity to say that we believe both boards, meeting and working together, can make real progress, even in tough times. And I want to take this opportunity, to, before I forget it, to thank our citizens, our taxpayers, those who make it all happen here in Chesterfield County, and of course, our excellent and dedicated staff who work tirelessly to make a difference in the county. And now we'll have some comments from my, our vice chair, Mr. Chris Winslow, vice chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Chesterfield. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Winslow. Chairman. I appreciate that. And uh, of course, uh, it should go without saying that in budget season, uh, we don't go a day without thinking about the budget and all of the people that that budget affects in the course of a fiscal year. And 
you know, in this year that's been so challenging and uh, so um, uh, formidable for so many, um, in, uh, including all of our citizens, we really have taken a strong look at both our funding for, as Mr. Chairman pointed out, our public safety and our teaching workforce. And in many ways, this is the year of the workforce from a budget perspective. I have never seen in six years uh, a, um, an ability to do as much as we're able to do, separate and apart from what the state and what the federal government are doing for Chesterfield County. And I'm extremely pleased about that and share in, in Mr. Chairman's pride, and I, as well as our entire board does uh, on that note. Um, as you know, we commissioned a pay study to deal specifically with teacher compression over the last year. And our staff in the finance department has been studying that uh, plan and recommendation from our consultant. And uh, it, it's just amazing to me that we're able to fund for 4,700 teachers in Chesterfield County, the pay compression uh, plan that you're going to see and, and that Matt will get into a little bit more detail uh, shortly. This, in addition to our normal merit-based raise for other employees uh, and our commitment to funding differentiated support initiatives, which we've heard from time and time again, is also an issue for our teachers. In addition to compression, what's going on in my classroom? What's going on in my school? There are different challenges for different schools. And this initiative, these dual initiatives, fund both of those efforts. And really, really proud to do so. You know, success breeds success. And I am confident that this investment, Mr. Chairman, will set Chesterfield up well in the long run. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today and sharing your pride. Matt, did you uh, have an, uh, something to say regarding a little bit more detail on how these uh, efforts will fund our teachers? Yeah, Mr. Winslow, I think we have a few visuals if, uh, if we could throw that up on the, the screen real quickly. Just to give you some sense of, uh, of what board members are talking about, I think the crux of today's announcement and just walking through the budget process a little bit, um, we are here today to announce that the Board of Supervisors is positioning an additional $10 million of pure local monies to be able to execute the plan that uh, Mr. Holland, Mr. Winslow talked about in their opening, specifically geared and, and targeted towards uh, the teacher decompression topic, which has been something that's been bad around for a number of years. Earlier on in the process, uh, you know, we thought the local transfer may be close to around $8 million. We've continued to work the budget process, uh, hear from our constituencies, work with uh, our school partners and understand the priority of that plan and this additional ten million dollars will allow that to uh, to move forward uh, beginning in the fiscal 22 budget that begins on July the 1st. More details will be coming out uh, certainly as the school board entertains their full budget on this coming Thursday. Uh, we have a work session that uh, again will go into more, much more specifics on the 10th of March. Uh, with the full board of supervisors, and I think schools is planning to uh, to join us for a portion of that. But you see on the screen, essentially, uh, very quickly, just paying attention to the shapes of the line. The, uh, the the solid line on the bottom of the screen exists really shows the existing uh, pay spread amongst these 4,700 or so uh, teachers, the, the classroom folks, the frontline employees in the school division. You see just uh, in a non-scientific way, that sag that exists there in the middle part uh, of a teacher's career. And so when decompression, just shown in a simple slide, which is a, is a com can be a complex topic, visually that's what it looks like. You see the progression throughout one's career slows down in those middle years, uh, you know, very valuable. That's a teacher that's got 10 to 15 years of experience, you know, really some, uh, some critical 
uh, employees for the school division, but you don't see the compensation kind of keeping up with that output, if you will. What you see based on the consultant's report and the work that's been done over the course of the last six to eight months is the dotted line above there that shows the adjustment of how that would occur uh, with the implementation of this decompression plan. And you see a much straighter line, uh, a much more predictable and fair uh, progression in terms of teacher salaries. And that sag has, uh, has all but been eliminated. But there's a one more quick chart and then I will, uh, I'll talk, toss back to Dr. Casey. This just shows from a percentage perspective. And again, these are average increases and again, more details to come. But if you could look at these two, I think you have handouts in front of you, that sag is really just lifted up uh, in a very, very simple terms by those mid-year increases, which range from about eight to 11%, depending on what level of experience the teacher has. Uh, on average, you know, it, it pencils out to over a 5% increase for uh, everybody in the plan, or on average, uh, a 5% increase. But you see less investment at the either tail end, but the, the bulk of our teachers are in that middle part of their career. That's where the resources are focused, and you see the correction uh, to compression. And, and just as was done with the public safety plan, that was approved uh, back before the holidays. This does complete the compression work on the teacher side. So with the passage of this budget uh, in, in a couple of uh, studies and a couple of votes, compression for our two major employee groups has been uh, eliminated in Chesterfield County. And if I could just um, further add to, again, the theme of today is nothing more than the local government trying to recognize and trying to hear what the schools have been talking about for months, sometimes years, as it relates to uh, the compression that you see on this particular chart. Uh, you know, as you know, back in December, we start what we call a target setting process. We, we try and err conservatively, which means we see err low on what local revenues will be. We err low on what the state revenues will be. And uh, all we're trying to do today is illustrate uh, to our friends at the school board, we've had actually very recent discussions with the school board chair and vice chair, to just show our nature of helping them to be positioned uh, at their next meeting to know that the local government uh, is behind them. We have accelerated our revenue estimates as far as our processes because our budget itself is not necessarily balanced until March 10th when that becomes public. But again, just to help our friends at the school board, we felt as though that we would take uh, their budget and local target up to 18 million plus, which is 10 million more than we had in December. Again, the strength of the local economy, even during this pandemic, uh, has been there in our real properties and our sales taxes that we are comfortable today uh, saying that that is now part of the base revenues uh, that we will be giving the schools. In fact, most of the revenue growth and our estimates since our December allocations, I believe it's 75 percent of our local revenue growth, is devoted to this extra $10 million initiative that you see before us today. We're hoping that this target process and this revised target that was initially shared with the school staff a, a few weeks ago, again, helps them understand that we are here for them, we are here there with them, uh, and it's not done yet. You know, we're not done with what the state budget may be. We're not done understanding our own local economy. We're not done understanding what may be CARES Act fundings and current year surpluses that are arising uh, because of lower enrollments, but hold harmless clauses that we have given the schools and revenues and uh, much appreciative to the state and their whole harmless clauses as well uh, for enrollment projections, which I think are close to 4,000 below the, uh, they otherwise were projected to be and otherwise funded at those levels. So again, we're doing this a little earlier than we normally would. We would probably be doing this more so March 10th, uh, but we also wanna position our friends at the schools to realize we are with them, we have heard them. Uh, there's lots of complexities that, that are with a budget and a target setting process. Uh, but we're trying to make in some simple fashion today uh, a communication, a communication from five board members uh, that is committing uh, them, themselves and us to making this happen. So we, we want to work with our, our friends at the schools between now and Thursday. Uh, the chair and vice chair will be talking to their counterparts as well to further orient them on this and answer any questions. But again, our budget's not adopted till April and during a pandemic and during an economic crisis, this is a year-long exercise. We may be talking about budgets in April, May, June, really for the foreseeable future, as we understand more and more of what's uh, changing in our economy, what's changing in future federal legislation, CARES Act Part Two type funding, 
Uh, what's changing again towards the needs and dynamics that we've learned to operate differently as a county and to the school's credit, they've learned to operate differently too. There are some savings uh, to be had, savings to be repositioned, savings to be reinvested. So all you're seeing today is again, this goodwill opportunity uh, for us to publicly state, not just as staff, not just as a county administrator, but again, with the chair and vice chair representing our entire board of supervisors here today. All right, thank you all um, uh, for that presentation. At this time, we're gonna open it up for questions. Um, we ask that you all state your name as well as your media organization. Uh, that way, when uh, the board members and our administrators can repeat that question uh, to not only you all, but our audiences at home, uh, they'll be able to respond to you um, as so. So um, we're open for questions. Uh, yes. I'll, I'll take it away. Well, it's on the screen before us. If you look at what we've done with compression, we've eliminated it which has always been an issue with our school system and, and of course, teachers. And so if you look at the 15th year, 11% increase, everyone at least 5% increase. So the big takeaway today is that we are funding. We're, not, we are supporting our teachers, but we're also putting money where we have stated the commitment is that is to funding our teachers and ensuring that we continue with excellence. Uh, we have outstanding teachers, and we want to fund them as well. And so that takeaway is that compression adjustment, as noted by our deputy, 11%, 5% average is pretty significant. Thank you, Jasmine. Oh, I forgot to ask that question. Let's see. Oh, there you are. Sorry. Who would like to take that? I'll let my vice chair take that question. Your, could you repeat your question? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I could barely hear it. Oh, well, uh, thank you for that. And the question was about the school board's budget. And essentially, the school board still has not uh, worked through its budget and balanced its budget. So we're this is a process. We continue to work through that process, and we welcome our further dialogue. Our understanding is that the school board will be uh, enacting that balancing mechanism later this week. And so we look forward to receiving that. But based on how the process has proceeded to date, you know, uh, we wanted to make certain that the public knew the intent of this Board of Supervisors is to fund this compression adjustment for good this fiscal year 22. In addition, I might add that we've also asked them to let us know other needs they have as well to put that in our appendix so that we can look at that. Should funding become available, we're prepared to look at it and work with them on, on that. As you know, we meet as chair and vice chair. We've met twice already. We'll continue to meet and continue to have a dialogue with our committees, finance committee, as well as liaison committee with our school uh, officials, school board officials. So thank you for that question. Thank you, Jess. Anyone else? All right, then. Well, I think we are going to go ahead and wrap things up um, here. Thank you all. So oh. Sorry. We 
Would you like to take, take that, Dr. Casey, because sure. you've been working very closely with our superintendent as well. So two parts to that, and it's again, it's the communications with our school board, and, and more importantly, the school board staff, because they're the ones who prepare budgets, they're the ones who prepare amendments uh, to their budget. And uh, the target that you see before us, the additional monies that you see before us, they are a revision to our December a letter that we had written. We had provided them informally just uh, an Excel type worksheet that pretty much outlined in numbers the pathway you see. What you see to this letter is really the narrative that goes with it. So it's easier to understand for not just the school board themselves as elected officials, the peers of our board of supervisors, but it's easier for parents, citizens, businesses to understand the intentional nature of what this uh, revised target is. Again, in, in my career, normally what you try and do is you set a target with the school board, and as Mr. Holland referred to, is that's what the school board's first mission is, and, and they try and meet the target of this budget. Having said that, all the school boards in my history, 30 years of doing this, will also create an appendix, you know, a list of other needs and wants, and we try and use that as a prioritized list of going forward. If new revenues arise, during the fiscal year or during the process if new state revenues arise. But we don't lose sight that a need is a need and we respect the school and the superintendent to define such needs. It's just really the capacities we have of our existing citizens, especially during a pandemic, to, to be paying for this. It's the capacities we have of our federal and state revenue sources, which again, have been confusing because of the pandemic and some of the special one-time revenues that are there. So um, we have actually discussed this further with the chair and vice chair of the school board. Uh, but again, we just want to try and create a letter that has a lot more narrative to it than just simple rows and columns of a worksheet. Uh, and again, we're not here to tell them what to do. We're just here to give them the advice and pathways to what we think could be a productive Thursday meeting of, the board, of their school board, because we do need them to have finality to a balanced budget so that we can then fit it into the balanced budget of the overall county. Once we have that all balanced out as a county and schools, we then proceed together and look at, again, new sources of revenues, state, local, or otherwise, that may arise. Or, and again, in case of this year, uh, there may be some large year-end balances because of the low cost nature of how we're operating, yet with, again, a good revenue stream coming in. So we all want to work together understanding what those balances are and how they can be further reinvested into county and schools. Any other questions? Jasmine? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we want to thank you all. First of all, I want to thank you all for being here today. I want to thank uh, staff, Mr. Vice Chair, as well, for being here. And certainly, we look forward to continuing to dialogue and talk with our school representatives and, of course, school system. But, it's, but the bottom line today is great news. We'll, we'll focus in on public safety and education simultaneously in the fiscal 22 budget. And that's great news for the county. In my years, of over 14 years as a, a member of this board, we've never been able to do that. And it's been one of my major priorities and goals is to really focus on making a difference in public safety, education, and all our employees because we believe in excellence. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. All right. At that time, this time, that will end our press conference. Thank you so much for joining us.